So let's just go over the best system really quick and the components. Initially, we have the best control module. This is where we do all of our operations from. It comes with 28 feet of hose. This allows us to get far enough away from the penetrating unit that will actually be engaged with the car. So on the control unit, we have a connection for a standard SCBA bottle. Okay, not the quick connect. If you have a quick connect system, you'll have to get an adapter for this. Uh, we have independent connections for all of our main airlines that work on the system. They're all independently different, so it makes it impossible to cross connect. Um, so it's, it's very simple, straightforward to connect. A department may want to use some color coded electrical tape to make it a little easier on their department. We have two different gauges on here. One gauge is showing the air pressure that's in the bottle. The other gauge is showing the air sit pressure that is in the working system. You need at least 600 PSI of air to make this system fire, and it operates off of the 4,500 PSI bottles. There are two controls on here, which makes it very simple to operate once we've charged the air cylinder to the system. The purple switch, is what you are gonna engage to fire the system, which is a simple throw switch to engage the system. That's all there is, okay? It's very simple. And we'll go through some reset and bleed off shortly after I get done explaining all the pieces parts. Part of the system is gonna be your independent hoses that have all the different connections that go into the control unit, okay? One is to bleed. Two of them are to operate the quick throw valve, and one holds the air pressure. So once we charge this system, we're gonna have air pressure in this large line all the way over to the quick valve. Okay, the quick valve is hooked to the system, so we have 600 PSI in a large reservoir. Once we engage the system, these two lines here control this switch valve opening and closing. So when we charge the system, we'll throw 600 PSI into the system. It is gonna throw the penetrating nozzle into the battery pack, and it's gonna be quickly followed with water. Water is gonna come from this line over here, which goes from the unit all the way back to the truck. So we're supplying that with an inch and a half connection, usually on your inch and three quarter attack line at 100 PSI eight gallons a minute is what it'll take. When we set up the system, we're gonna be very simple, using an SCBA off the truck, hooking up to it, hooking up all of our lines into the system, hooking water to the truck. We will charge water to the unit. We'll charge the system with the SCBA cylinder. Once this is placed under the battery pack in a position with deemed necessary from our ERGs. Then by simply throwing our switch on the purple button, this will fire into the battery pack and allow water to flow through instantly. So it's a really simple system. We'll now go through the connections, hookups, how to set it, how to reset it, and how to put it away. So before we start setting up, we wanna make sure that this is actually put away appropriately. So when we get the unit out, we're gonna be at zeros on both gauges. And on the purple gauge, we're gonna be turned where it shows the penetrating nozzle retracted into the head unit, not deployed. As long as we're in the off position, we can start hooking up. If we're not in the off position, we start hooking up, we could have an accidental deployment and that's gonna delay our effectiveness in setting things up. Before we're setting up, and at the conclusion where we're putting this unit away, we wanna make sure that the quick valve is in the off position. That is indicated by this line crossing the air line, indicating an off position. So it will be crossing the air line to show an off position. If we're not in this position and we engage the air system, the penetrating nozzle will deploy on its own. So making sure that this is how it is in position before we engage and when we DC the unit and put things away that it is put away in this position will give you solid success during your operation. 
So a couple things to watch when we're doing this, as I mentioned before, is we have different connectors that go onto this unit. I always start by putting in the main unit and making sure that the collars snap back. We want to make sure that we have positive connections when we're hooking things up. Each one needs to be placed in the service and then we want to make sure that we have that positive connection so that we're not coming undone while we're operating. A quick check will save you a lot of time at issues later. Once you've hooked up the control side and depending on how your department trains, another person can be working on the penetration and hip unit. One of the things that I have found makes things easier is if I put the unit upwards, that allows me to have a positive force going downwards and I get that positive connection. On this unit, we really have two connections. We have the main quick valve and we have the relief valve and then we have our water. Once all those are put into place, you have the connectivity between your control unit and your quick valve. Now we can go ahead and take this over to our engine, hook up to our water supply. As soon as we're ready to move this into position, we can charge our SCBA cylinder to the control unit. We can charge our water to the penetrating unit. We also have a, a nice adapter here that was designed to take either a New York hook or a pike pole and place in the here so you have a long lever to place the unit underneath the vehicle without having to get too close. Once that's all in position, then you can slide this under the vehicle. Once it's under the vehicle, we have water pressure, then we can activate the system. Activation of the system can be a little loud, so we want to make sure that we've got people into the safe zone where this control unit's going to be. Then a simple call out of a three, two, one, so everybody knows what's going on. And just turning this valve will activate the system, puncturing into the battery pack and flowing water immediately into the pack. After we've fired the system, this quick valve will open, allowing that big reservoir of air to rush into the system pushing that penetrating nozzle up with 600 PSI of force in about 10 milliseconds. It's very quick and it's a very sharp point. It has been tested through all the no manufacturer protection shells around the battery pack, and then water will start flowing immediately. We have to remember that anything inside of this ring has the potential to penetrate a foot, a hand, so we never work with anything inside of there while it's pressurized. And if we need to, for a reset, we're gonna use a tool like a pipe pull or something to push that back in. If for some reason during deployment, we have a firing into a part of the battery pack that doesn't actually contain modules, uh, somehow we had a misfire by somebody turning the injection nozzle too quickly, once we're in place, if we need to reset quickly for another fire, all we need to do is turn this purple switch back to the down position, and we'll automatically reset this valve. Once this valve is reset, it's gonna keep air pressure from going into the unit. We can use the gray switch, which is our purging switch, to purge the air on the off side of this nozzle. Once we take that pressure off, we can take the handle of a pike pole. We can push the penetrating nozzle back into place and it is ready to reinsert and fire again. Okay, now we wanna talk about the complete DC or breakdown of the unit after a successful deployment. One of the things to consider is, you know, heat exposure, making sure we're not working with the hot surface. This penetrating nozzle is gonna be ejected out. So we have a hot, uh, pointy area that we have to worry about as far as safety, not stepping on things and whatnot. So how do we take this thing out of the vehicle? Let's deploy it 
there's a possibility that now it was slightly wedged in the protective pan uh, below the battery pad. So if we raise the vehicle back up, give this thing clearance to fall out, just the weight of this coupled with moving back and forth with your pipe pole is going to loosen up that penetrative point and allow the unit to fall out. Now we can pull it out away from the vehicle, get it to a good area to start doing our breakdown. Once we start to do our breakdown, we've got to understand a few things first. First thing we want to do is we'll turn off the water supply and we can disconnect the water connector from the system. Um, there's possibly some cleaning that will need to be done and any and all parts on this can be decontaminated and cleaned up with Simple Gree and a brush. Uh, we'll talk about inspections here in a moment, but we want to get this thing ready to go back into service. This penetrating nozzle will be deployed, okay? And we still have air on the system, okay? Because we still have our SCB hooked up. The system is on, so it means we have air going through the system right now, holding that penetrating nozzle in place. First thing we have to do is turn off the SCBA bottle. Okay, that'll eliminate any more airflow into the system. By turning off that SCBA and not allowing any more air into the system, we can now use our gray purge button and purge our system. One of the first things we'll see fall away is the SCBA bottle pressure. Since we're not hooked anymore, that's going to go quickly to zero. And our system pressure is going to work its way towards zero. As we get down to the zero point and we don't hear any more air escaping. I always work the button back and forth a few more times to make sure I've completely purged the system. And now I can disconnect anything on my air side. So I'm completely purged out. I can disconnect to here. My valve is open because that was the last function they did. And what I need to do is either with a wrench or a flat tip screwdriver is we'll reset that valve to the off position so that next time we activate we don't have air rushing by. Now we'll use this is going to be deployed so I always take the tip off that removes any of the hazards of a pointy surface to do anymore. Now we put the plunger back into the system. If there may possibly be still some resistance on that you can always take this top connector, which is our, your purging system, which is a gray button, and use a tool and push that nipple in, and that will get rid of any air as you're pushing the plunger back into the system. At this point in time, we do take all of our hoses and connectors off and get ready to do an inspection and put up our, our unit. Okay, as we're putting things back into service and preparing it for its next mission, we want to give everything a quick, quick inspection and possibly a cleaning. This unit right here, probably not so much in the cleaning because we're going to have this in the clean zone, but it's the simple things of checking the O-ring, make sure it remains for the SEPA cylinder hookup, checking for any loose fittings, inspecting the connections to make sure we didn't cause any damage to them during deployment, I'm doing the same on these tips. We want to make sure that we haven't collected any dirt or debris inside of the fitties. Make sure that we haven't had any damage to this end. On this side, since it's not in the exposed area, we usually don't find anything, but giving everything a good once over to make sure that we haven't abraded anything. We do have protective sleeves on this, and on the working end, we have high temperature silicone. For this end of the hose system, we want to again make sure that we have turned our quick valve to the off position, cutting off the line on the air reservoir, checking all of our fittings to make sure that we still have our O-rings, that we haven't gathered any debris, that we haven't suffered any heat damage along the hose lines, and doing the same on this side of the connection. We're going to make sure that all of our connections appear clean, that the nipples are working fine, so they're free to operate. We are going to replace this tip. Your unit comes with two. Since we do not know exactly the exposure 
of the penetrating nozzle, once it enters the battery pack, we want to replace it. And this is a consumable item, and you can order spares through your dealership. We just want to make sure that it's going to work effectively when it's put up. We are also going to check our bolts, make sure they're still in good contact, haven't come loose, and just a nice visual inspection and a good cleaning with some simple green and a brush. This will now be ready to place back in the service with the new tip and you're ready for your next call. One of the common standard operating procedures for this is going to be able to slide it underneath the vehicle, generally with the assistance of jaws or a race jack. Uh, kind of assuming that we've probably lost the tires due to fire already, or the simple fact that the EVs tend to ride fairly low to the ground. So placing this underneath may require lifting, placing it underneath, and actually placing the weight of the car back on the unit. But we all know vehicles don't always land on their wheels when things happen. If we're at an EV fire because of a, a vehicle accident, we may have to look for other opportunities or maybe it's stuck in the mud and we really can't get under it. One of the things that we can do is actually invert this, place it inside the vehicle on the floorboard. We may have to push the seat out of the way, but once we can get to the floorboard, take your rescue strut, one of your hydraulic rams, push it to the ceiling, holding it to the bottom of the car, and inject into the top of the battery pack. Because of the thickness of the battery pack and the length of throw on the positioning of the penetrating nozzle, we still do not have to worry about it contacting both sides of the battery, so we still maintain our safety factor. That gives us an option too. If it's on its side, and we have to come in from the floor of this direction, we can actually place this up against the floor, which is the bottom side of the battery now, under the vehicle, put a rescue 42 or some side of strut to it, um, and take a strap, strap it into place, and we can penetrate there. Some ask, well, this is gonna be on fire. They do have to understand that these battery packs do have burst valves. So most of the time, our flame is gonna be exiting the battery pack in a specific position. That's no, we can work around that to get this secured to the vehicle and penetrate that way. So don't think of this as a one directional thing. It's not just from underneath the vehicle. And this is something that it's really good to practice and play with before you get into a situation where you truly have to use it in a live event. So one of the things to help you identify where the battery placement is on vehicles is an app called EV Rescue. It gives you the different types of vehicles as well as giving you the ERGs, which shows where the batteries are at. It's also a very handy tool for electric vehicle extrication so you don't cut into the, any of the high voltage lines that may be running in say an A-pillar or something like that. Uh, just a good tool to have on hand. It allows you to get prepared as you're rolling to the scene if you get good information as to what vehicle it is. But always find out, take the time, be safe so we have a good successful deployment. So this has been a quick overview, a nice training as to why we do the EVs. Uh, why we have a system like this out there for departments to use and how we set up and break down. The important point is, is to take the system, get it out there, use it, practice with it, be ready when things happen. If any time along the way you run into questions, you can always reach out to your dealer and salesman that you purchased the unit from. Uh, they can get more information through us if necessary. And you can also reach out to rosenbauerramerica.com on the contact list.